Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. When we last left off, we were about to start Mission 3. I see radiation damage here. Maybe that's releasing the mystery goo too far outside of the sphere of influence. Or outside the, the planet. So does this give us a rocket that's ready to go? So here on the launch pad, Gene reminds us that we're reaching Minmus' sphere of influence. And then once we're just below 100k, we let out a mystery goo. And they're looking for a 10k orbit of Minmus. Let's go ahead and go to two-thirds throttle. SAS on and go! No time to waste. We'll go straight up as the crow flies. And then once we really start picking up some speed and getting out of this soupy stuff, we'll pitch on over to the 90 and hope we can make it there. So almost 100 meters a second, looking good. Everything is working operationally, nominal as they say. All right, let's go ahead and work to pitch over. Now this rocket wants to go pretty much in a straight line, so we really have to fight on the outside of this thrust vector to get it to pitch. But once it pitches over, it's pretty stable. This is a pretty solid rocket if you wanted to mimic uh, your own designs after this as far as a Minmus lander goes. Uh, this wouldn't be a bad opening strategy. All right, pitching on over still. SAS is holding tight. We'll just keep pitching on over until we can get to the 45. And now we're into the intermediate atmosphere. We'll go ahead and throttle up just a bit, get some more turn authority. And then right before we lose this stage, we'll go full speed on it. Roll program, full speed. And that should be clean separation right here for us. So there we go. We're getting a little bit of shock heating, not too awful bad. I'll throttle down just a touch and we will keep right along that thrust vector. Yeah, we're about to slow down a lot, but we are getting out of the atmosphere. We want to look and see what our altitude is going to be. We want it to be about 95 or so whenever we complete this burn. They want it to be between 95 and 100, so we can definitely do that. Three, four, five, six, cut. All right, let's go ahead and plan our maneuver and get the orbit circularized to prepare for the mystery goo launch. 107.95, that should be okay. Looks like it's going to be about a minute. So at T minus 30 seconds or so, we'll go ahead and complete the burn. Now we're using a little bit of electric charge to turn the rocket. However, these engines will provide charging back to the battery. And that's gonna be more important for when we take off to Minmus because that long transit, the batteries are going to slowly, uh, you know, deplete. And we don't want that. So we want to make sure our probes are in hibernation mode. All right, so here we go at T minus 30. We're going to push the go button. Stability control on and go. Now, once we see the map flip, we're, we know we are in an orbit. And we sort of want to modulate... Um, our altitude here, no sense in burning over 100k because that's not what the mission required. We're going to do some heavy lifting here with our first stage and get ready for our first stage separation. Then these engines will kick on and it will be beautiful. And then we can actually uh, get rid of that fairing so we're not pushing around as much weight. So there we go, first stage done. Boosting full, there goes the fairing. Excuse me, good sir. We don't need you, your kind, around here anymore. And cut. Now, let's see where that puts us in the grand scheme of things. We can always give it more juice. So, 105 by 81. So, unfortunately, I think we actually need to bring our orbit down just a touch before we get to our apoapse. Which I believe we can do by doing something like this. 
Nope, that that's wrong. It's more on the uh, prograde side. We need a little bit more retrograde, if we can, just to lower it enough to get below that 100,000 limit. Three, two, one. There we go, just under 100K. And then all we gotta do is go prograde for our Apoaps burn, and then we'll be able to put this mystery goo in its place. Still should have plenty of fuel left. So let's go ahead and get ready for this. We're gonna put our maneuver node here on the Apoaps and just give it a little tug. That way we know where our marker is going to be. And then we can just go time acceleration right here. It's going to hold station. And then once we reach our Apoaps, it will just be a small burn. There we go. Two seconds and increase. Ninety-eight. That should be close enough for government work. All right, let's go ahead and open the mystery goo. Interesting. We didn't get a message. Oh, because we're over a hundred thousand. All right, so let's. Can we reset that experiment? Yes, we can. All right, so we need to bring our orbit down by sixty-one meters. Unfortunately. Let's see if we can do something like that. Nope. That's the wrong way on the wrong road. We'll go retro just a little bit around here. Ninety-nine, ninety-five, and 97. Now we observe the mystery goo. Just a little bit finicky. There we go. This is Walt Kerman from the PR team. Great work. Two rainbows. Kerbals are celebrating, and now we're starting to receive more applications for the astronaut complex. All right. Put the system to sleep, and we'll be in touch when you orbit Minmus. So orbiting Minmus is the next goal. Minmus is right out here. We'll set that as the target, and we will see as we come around that the ascending node is here on the backside of the planet. And I believe we can meet up with Memmus right there at the ascending node. We want the Apoaps to be right there at the descending node. And there we go. We've got our encounter. And then we can fine tune uh, that approach a little bit later. But that should be fine right there. So a 28 second burn, it says. So that should recharge our batteries enough for us to do what we need to do. In the meantime, we can shut down until we're close enough to um, the, the burn. So I will go ahead and shut down and do the burn and see you when we are around Mimis. Time to wake up the rocket. We will wake up the Probodobodyne Stay Putnik. We'll get right on our marker here and fire at T minus 14 seconds is the name of the game. SAS on. And we are a little bit away. Once we get close, we'll throttle down and then uh, watch it from the map view. 15, boom. Big bird. Not big bird, but a big bird. All right, right on that maneuver node, we'll slow right down so we can be a little bit more accurate. We'll pop out to the map view. Start really slowing down. There it was, just a little bit off. So one minor retrograde maneuver should put us on an encounter with Menmus, and then we can shut down completely. We'll have 600 and some odd uh, electric charge, which should be good enough to uh, orientate this thing, get it in orbit, and get it good to go. It is just going to be a squeeze of throttle.
next maneuver node set as you can see we're going to be coming pretty much uh, on the equator of Minmus and we're shooting for that 10k orbit I have the probe turned off we have plenty of electric charge here I also extended my antenna along the way to give I don't know if that actually affects whether or not Kerbin can talk to us well and I also dialed down the engine strength uh, the thrust limiter because Minmus doesn't require a whole lot of thrust to get things done with so I wanted to be absolutely sure we were not going to uh, overshoot. So we just went past the parry, but that is fine. We'll go ahead and get this rocket pointed, retrograde, and then we'll do our burn here and see what it shows. So there we go, bringing our orbit down nice and low. We don't need this anymore. We just want our Apple apps to flip and our Perry apps to drop right at 10K. 10.3, sounds good. All right, so then we just need another right here. Add the maneuver. Let's add a little bit of retrograde until they flip. Something like that should be good. So 22 meters a second is all we need. I like it. We'll hibernate. We'll head on around. Yeah, still plenty of electric charge. I'm feeling pretty good about that. There's Minmus there. We're on the light side of the planet, so we get to do our last burn here in the comfort of the sunlight, it seems. Well, maybe. <laughs> We're going to the dark side now. All right, we'll turn our probe on. We'll go ahead and get around retrograde and then we'll do our burn and see if that gets us to a 10K by 10K orbit. In a perfect, word, perfect world, it shall. All right, so it's about to flip. Nope. Throttle off. Well, I didn't have the map up, or I didn't have this up, so it kept throttling right on by. Luckily, we're at 10.4. We can afford to spend a little bit more fuel raising this back up to 10K. I didn't like the fact that I, I had the, the, the cut throttle button on, but yet it just refused my commands. All right, so let's just give her a little bit of gas on this Apple Apps. 9.7 by 10.7. There we go. You've got a ship to Mimus. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now it's time to learn more about our mysterious smaller satellite. We're going to settle once and for all whether Mimus is made of mint ice cream. First, we need you to conduct and transmit a gravity scan with that small blue box. Then we need you to crash Muna 1 into Mimus to test its composition. Well, that is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's go ahead then and run the gravioli detector and transmit that data. We should have plenty of electric charge in the bank. We were really uh, frugal with our electric charge. And then we basically just go retrograde and smash it into the ground, which that's the easiest part of the mission. There we go. So Gravioli is checked off and now we have to destroy the probe. Easiest way to do that is just to go retrograde a bit and once we cease our speed and we start falling to Minmus, we'll just turn right around and pick up speed. Yeah, I think that should be good like so. We're definitely going to hit Minmus and now we're going for the Croup de Gracie. We're going to go surface, point it to the ground, just below the retrograde marker, and we'll burn. It 
So now, full speed. We got a lot of juice. There we go, 313 meters a second. So that should be enough to destroy this thing, hopefully. Let's go ahead and separate. The fuel tank should smash, and we should smash, and we can call this episode a good one. Boom! Nice work and the fabulous educational destruction of Muna 1. In fact, you did so well, we want you to crash Muna 2 into the moon. Isn't rocket science fun? While you're working on that, our scientists will be working overtime to determine if Mimus is as delicious as it appears in our telescopes. All right, let's send Muna 2 to orbit the moon. All right, so where... Oh. So we're right here now, are we? So what's with the uh, with the lag here? All right, so crash Muna One into Menmus. We've done that. What are we doing? Oh, I see. Send Muna Two to orbit the Moon. All right, so we can do that. I didn't know there was going to be a part two to this thing. All right, so let's uh, actually save the game here. And now we're ready to save. All right, same process, I guess. We'll go two-thirds throttle, SAS on, go! All right, we'll pitch over to the 90, and I don't know what kind of orbit they want around the moon. Could be a bit tricky. All right, let's go ahead and pick up speed here. Nope, okay, it's pitching over a little bit. Let's go full throttle here. All right, we are ready to take off to the moon. SAS on. Let's go two-thirds throttle. Three, two, one, go. Now, one thing that I don't know, and I believe this is the same style of rocket, is do we have to be as frugal with the electric charge as our last encounter? That is to see. But I'll go ahead and get this up into orbit. I don't think they want a mystery goo or anything such of that nature. So I'll just go ahead and get to a lunar orbit and be right back. Heads up that we've loaded Muna 2 with more mystery goo. Stage and release it into a glue cat, a goo cloud when in orbit around the moon, you know, to impress the kids back home. And keep in mind that your electronics are slowly getting fried by cosmic radiation. You've got about 20 days. Oh, thank you, Gene, for your vote of confidence, good sir. I appreciate that. All right, so we'll continue on to the moon. I don't know what kind of orbit they want. Um, I can't see that here, but I imagine more of the same. Not entirely sure. All right, I'll complete this burn and be right back with you.
All right, so as you can see, we've completed our um, our maneuver node, and we're approaching from the ascending node here, and we are going to wait nine orbits. It's going to be in four hours, 55 minutes, and then we can burn out to the moon, uh, and it should be okay. So I'll go ahead and do that burn and be right back with you. All right, little probe, it is time to wake up and get out of hibernation. We have an 18 second burn to get to the moon and that's what we shall do. We'll go ahead and rotate over and do T minus nine. And then we'll, we'll do some adjusting once we get, uh, see our actual orbit and see uh, what this does for us. But we are ready to intercept the moon this time. SAS is on. We'll speed up just a touch here to get to T minus nine. 11, 10, go. So full burn here out of these engines, 100%. This is the biggest fuel sink of the mission for sure, is this transfer. Everything else should be fairly simple as far as fuel, con fuel consumption goes. All right, let's just give a little bit more. And a little bit more, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, there we go. One meter a second difference, what did that do for us? Okay, so we don't have our encounter just yet. I believe we need to increase our speed still, just a touch. Yep, so there we go. Just a little bit more and we have our lunar encounter at 1.23 million meters. I think what we want to do is we want at our apoaps, we want to add a maneuver and we want to get into the lunar plane so that is adjusting our inclination at the slowest point here. So we'll bring that right down. Periaps will come down to 978,000 meters. And are we equatorial or will we be equatorial? Kinda. It's only a two second burn and the way this looks, uh, we're going to be passing it on the right if this is to be believed, so that's the way we want to go. We want to sort of uh, capture the moon in a counterclockwise fashion as we see it here. So I'll go ahead and warp to our maneuver node. We'll have a two second burn and we'll see what that gets us. So I'll see you there. All right, about a minute out from our maneuver, let's turn on our little probe here and get him ready. Only a two second burn, so we're gonna go at T minus one and see if we are on the correct side of the moon or not. Luckily, we're at our, our Apple app, so if we do make a mistake, we can adjust it really quickly. Although the wasted fuel is a bummer. All right, cut that. So just a splurge of fuel and it looks like we are indeed coming around the opposite side of the moon. We'll hibernate and see where this gets us here. So we'll go ahead and take this encounter with the moon. And indeed, it does look like we're going to be uh, right in front of it. So there we are. That's where we're heading. This is the direction we should be going. So what we're going to work on now is just the capture. We want to make sure that we at least get in an orbit around the moon. That is the most important thing. Let's just add some retrograde until we get captured here. So there we go. That is enough. So a four second burn to get captured. I think we have enough fuel on board for that. At least I hope we do. We'll see here in a second. We do have RCS thrusters as well to help us along. So if it comes to inclination changes or something like that, we're covered. It'll be a long, slow process, but we don't have to burn our major fuel. All right, so one hour, 15 minutes to go for a four second burn. Let's go ahead and warp uh, closer to our node here. And this indeed is the direction we should be going. So there is the moon in all of its glory and we want to burn at T minus two seconds. 
So there's the one minute mark. We'll turn on our probe. SAS is on. And here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, one, two. Are we captured? Yes, we are indeed. Now we are three degrees off of our ascending and descending node. Um, what we want to do is hit the descending node on the Apoap side. Uh, that's where we will be moving the absolute slowest. And it looks like that's going to happen right about here. So this is descending, so we want to ascend. And I'm just putting that marker down sort of as a visual guide to see uh, where I'm going to go. All right, SAS off. Let's go ahead and rotate. And it's going to be on this marker here. Outstanding. So then we really don't even need um, the meters per second. We just needed this as a timer. So let's go ahead and hibernate again. Go around one day, two hours. And hopefully our antennas are not blocked. There's Kerbin there. Now if the moon gets in our way, uh, this would be uh, very difficult indeed. Three hours. It looks like the moon's gonna sort of behave a bit. I think it's actually right under us here. So with one hour to go, 40 minutes to go, we'll just do an RCS burn for our inclination change. Close enough to the node that it matters, but not far enough away that it skews off everything else. Within a minute should be good. Let's go to our map. Oh, let's turn on our probe first. Head to our map, open up our menu, RCS and thrust. Minus two, minus one, and there we go, zero on that inclination. So now it is just a matter of getting ourselves down to the 30 by 30 orbit. So let's start at our periaps. I think we would be able uh, to see Kerbin from there, and we'll just pull that right down to 30,000 meters or so. Just one second on the burn. We do have one second of fuel, I believe. And then if not, the RCS can definitely do the work. So we'll go ahead and point, and I will do this uh, orbiting maneuver and be right back with you. So as you can see, uh, Kerbin was blocking our reception to the moon. We could not do that burn there, so we have to go from our apoaps. I believe we would be able to accomplish such a thing, and we'll bring that parry right down to that 30,000 limit and use RCS to sort of fine-tune that. So we should be good. Once again, a one-second burn. We'll orientate ourselves to the other side, and I will see you for that burn. So there we go, we are within one minute. Let's hibernation off. And I believe we are ready to go. Um, 77 meters a second? Can we RCS that, I wonder? I mean, we can. We might be able to just give a little bit of fuel to help it out. But it looks like we'll be okay. Let's just do that. Just a smidgen of, of uh, throttle here. I'll get down to about 60 on that liquid fuel and then cut the liquid fuel engines and then just do the rest with RCS. Yeah, let's just do these last 10 meters with RCS. See how our Apoaps is doing. And then once we get that right down to 30, I think we'll be okay. There we go, 29861, close enough for Kerbal work. 
All right, so while we still have our um, droid up, let's go over here to our parry and go ahead and add this maneuver. And we want to bring that orbit right down to the 30 as well. And that should be us right there. Right there in that little snuggle zone. All right, so three hours and 41 minutes away. I'll go ahead and turn off our little robot and warp to the next maneuver. Well, let's go ahead and get in position first, shall we? That way it's not much of a surprise when we get there. And there'll just be one small burn, I think. So we're looking okay. That RCS is definitely coming in handy. All right, droid, hibernate. And I will see you at the next node. Time warp complete. We are 53 seconds away from the burn. Let's go ahead and unleash the hibernation. And why not? Let's just keep on burning those RCS thrusters. We'll watch our map view here. And our Apo apps will come right down. Our period will shrink. So we won't be in any danger of encountering that 20-day uh, thing. Let's just squeeze a little bit of fuel out of it to help it out. And we're bringing that right down. We're one degree off, but I think we're fine. Once that liquid fuel gets down to 50, I'll cut the regular engines. And we'll continue to burn right here. Now this is pretty much fine-tuning what we got. And once that gets down to 30, we should be in like a dirty shirt. Just doing regular um, physics time acceleration here. Bringing us right in. Alright, so 32 by 28. Is that going to be enough? That went away. I think it is. All right. Let us observe the mystery goo then. Hello, mystery goo. All right. That does it. Every Kerbo who looks up at the moon and dreams will see our goo cloud and know that they might someday stand on the moon and see Kerbin. The final part of your mission is guide the moon of two into a fiery crash. Do it somewhere where we can watch over here. Oh, and by the way, a message from the science team. Mimis is regular old rock. It just happens to look like mint ice cream. Of course, that wouldn't stop me from having a bite if I ever made it there myself. Outstanding. So there is the crash site uh, that they want. And essentially what we have to do is make sure, one, we're on the side of the planet, that we can do something about it. And then we need to adjust our inclination over the crash site here. Something like that. And then we need to slow right down. So what is that going to be? A zero second burn, it says. Well, if there's anyone that can do zero seconds, that's me. All right, so let's go ahead then and point to our node here. Do our quick time acceleration trick. Turn off our robot, and I will see you on the other side. All right, time to wake up, dear robot. Let's turn off the hibernation mode. Let's go, RCS, and squeeze off a as much of this as we can. We'll do some igniting as well. And then once we get over that crater, we should be fine. Now, I want to keep a little bit of liquid fuel on board. So probably when we get down to, say... 20 liquid fuel. We'll cut the main engines and ju just do the rest on RCS. Because I want to be sure that we have enough to get over that crater and then smashy smash. So 30 liquid fuel should be good. All right, let's cut the engines, do the rest on RCS. And then this should be us right over the crater when we're all said and done. And then if that is indeed the case, we can retrograde it up. 
There we go. All right, RCS off, stability off. We are over that crater. So if we were to retrograde into the crater there, something like that should be fine. What is that burn? Zero seconds. Well, I think we have zero seconds of fuel. That should be fine. So they want it right there in that crater, do ya? Well, I think we can put it there. All right, let's fast forward the four minutes. Two, one, and then get ready to go. We're gonna go full power here with everything we got. Five, four, three, two, one, go. With some fuel to spare. And that is going to be pretty close. As a matter of fact, I think we can actually tweak our approach just a touch. That way we land pretty much right there. So let's go ahead and rotate around. And it's an 18 meter burn. So I believe RCS thrusters can definitely do the trick there. And then we'll just see uh, where that gets us in the grand scheme of things. All right, RCS thrusters, go ahead and go. And I believe this will put us in a pretty sound trajectory to land right there in the middle of that crater. Cut. Now, assuming the moon doesn't rotate under us, we should be in like a dirty shirt. We may have to raise up just a little bit here. Let's raise our inclination up. And let's just burn this away. There we go. So is this where they want? It better be because we're coming down in a blaze of glory. All right, thrust straight down. 506 meters a second, here we go. Boom, success. We orbited Kerbin, we released the mystery goo. We got the gravity scan, we crashed in there. That is a good day. It's a bronze, 6,125 points. But that is a good day. But that's going to do it for me in this episode of Kerbal Space Program. Ladies and gentlemen, next time we will take a look at Meet Me in Zero G. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you in the next Kerbal Space Program video. Take care.